Okay, so let me put this into perspective for you guys. Let's just say I am approached by two of the best well-known lawn and snow tool distributors here in the green industry. And let's just say that the names of those companies are the Toro Company and Simplicity Mowers. Let's just say they send me a message that says something like, Hey Jake, we appreciate the nice content you've made over the last year or two. How would you feel about trying out some of our latest and greatest snow blowers in your videos? Let's just say when I get a question like that, I typically respond to it with, uh, hell yes. And as a result of that conversation, these two companies have graciously supplied me with four snowblowers, each in a league of their own, and because of that, I have spent the entire month of February pretty much putting all of these snowblowers through a plethora of different situations that we all come across, whether we're a professional doing snow for a living or a DIYer looking to clear our driveways in a very reasonable amount of time. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much what this video is, the battle of the snowblowers. May the best snowblower win. What's going on everybody? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Welcome back to yet another video. So nice to have all of you guys here. Here in Indiana at the time I'm filming this video, I'm a little late on this one actually. It is 70 degrees and sunny and all the snow is gone and we have 10 days left till spring. But I figured I owe it to all of you guys who have been watching the snowblower content over the last month to give you guys my thorough, honest review on all four of the snowblowers graciously supplied to me by my good friends over at Toro and Snapper, giving you guys my final thoughts on all four of them and which one I think is the best. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Also guys, while we are on the topic of spring, I would like to go ahead and make one thing clear and that is the fact that this channel is called Jake the Lawn Kid, where basically I show all of my friends out there who are DIYers how to have a deep, dark, green, thick lawn. So if that's something you guys are interested in in the prime time of the season, I recommend you subscribe to the channel or you could do whatever you want, but the option's out there for those of you guys who want. And for those of my longtime followers who have been watching for a long time, I finally have my website out there for those of my friends out there who've been following for a while. You wanna get some of the products that I associate with my teachings here on the YouTube channel. You could finally find those on my website at jakethelawnkid.net. I will leave the link right here and down below as well for those who want to check it out and stock up for the spring season of 2021, which will be happening here in another couple of weeks. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking right now. Let's get into the bread and butter, which is going to be the snowblower content. Okay, everybody, now before we get into the bread and butter here, I wanna go ahead and briefly talk some specifications on all of these units because as I've talked about at the beginning of this video as well as in vlogs past, is the fact that all of these snowblowers are pretty much different in their own way. They're all in a league of their own. We have a little taste of everything from what you could find at a big box store to an elite brand that you could only find at your dealer. And because of that, I wanna go ahead and amplify some of those differences by telling you some of the specs that I've noticed in these units over the last couple of months that made them really stand out to me starting with the baby of the group that is going to be the Toro Snowmaster 24 inch. Now this retails for a whopping $750, pretty cheap. You could find it at any big box store. Primarily your Home Depot is going to carry it. So it's a great entry level unit that's available to everyone. And one of the things I noticed about this unit right off the bat is it's what I would consider to be a hybrid between a single and a dual stage snowblower, meaning you get the simplicity and small size of a single stage, but you also get the power and build build of a dual stage. So you get the best of both worlds there with a simpler design. Now, one more thing that I really like about it is the fact that it does have personal pace. As you guys have heard me talk about in past videos where I've talked about Toro products, I am psyched on personal pace. It's one of those things that they put on all their lawnmowers and the fact that they're bringing it to the snowblower market, that is awesome, Toro. Great work, love personal pace as it caters to your speed. So Toro, great work for including that on this model. Now, moving on to our next model here, we have the Briggs & Stratton 10 24. This is what I would consider to be your standard entry level uh, dual stage as it's 24 inches in width. You get that dual stage assembly in there. You get the one auger and the one in the back. My cat. Let's, listen, I tried to record this and he stepped on the keyboard and turned the mic off. I love him though. He's good. He's all right. Now another standard dual stage feature you get on here is going to be the six speed adjustment where you can adjust it to go six speeds forward and two speeds back. That allows you to preset it whenever you're doing um, regular snow, which I find quite nice. And on top of that, you also get the standard crank and the lever to adjust your chute. And with that, headlights. So right away, that screams that this is kind of on the higher tier of standard dual stage. So Briggs, 
Great work for including the headlight. Moving on to what I consider to be the epic upgrade of the group, and that is going to be the Toro Power Max 26. Now, you can get so many different iterations of this uh, unit. You can get 24 inches, I believe. You could even go up to 28, maybe even 30 if you wanted to. I believe you could do the same with the Briggs. This is just the unit that I have. It's 26 inches wide, so you do get a little bit of extra power, a little bit of extra clearing width to save a little bit more time. One feature that really stands out to me on this unit is the hand warmer. The hand warmers are very dependent on where you buy it from. If you buy it from Home Depot, you're pretty much going to be paying a base price of $9.99, and I don't think you get the hand warmers. You'll have to check uh, Home Depot's website for that. I'm not entirely sure, so I'm not going to speak on it, but based on what I'm seeing, it looks like if you want the hand warmers, you can go to your dealer, and that's in there for an extra $100 if you want it, so you get those hand warmers, which I find to work exceptionally well. Toro really nailed it with these hand warmers. They are oh so comfortable while using the unit, and on top of that, all in all quality build here so it makes the unit that much bigger and that much better now last but not least we got the big dog of the group which is going to be the simplicity 1227 select this has been in almost every snow video i've done this year because it's hands down my favorite if i'm being honest right the biggest snowblower for some reason is always the favorite i don't know why but anyway i love this snowblower a lot it has got a 27 inch clearing width so a step up from the power max again you could probably get bigger power maxes too if you want but i digress anyway 27 inch clearing width the dual stage assembly you get more power you get a bigger unit and one feature that really stands out to me on this besides the fact that it also has hand warmers like the Power Max is the fact that it has steering brakes installed within the levers. And basically what that is, is when you take a look at the drive, you'll have these two like brake levers that allow you to brake one of the tires on each side, which helps with turning around objects like cars, trucks, whatever you have in your driveway, or all in all, just turning around 180 degrees as you are going up and down your driveway. It just makes that process much smoother and much more comfortable. Is a common problem I run into with say the standard Briggs that I talked about earlier. It doesn't have that, nor or does it really have the ability to turn around things smoothly and because of that that does make operation a little more frustrating with those standard entry-level units the fact that they include that is awesome now it probably goes without saying but simplicity is one of those brands that you can only find at your dealer I don't see any simplicity being sold in the big box store and I believe that's probably because simplicity is one of those brands those quality brands if you will that is aimed mostly at professionals so that already speaks volumes to me considering we haven't even talked about performance yet so because of that I have high expectations for this unit as I'm sure you guys do as well anyway it's a quality unit you could find it at your dealer if you want to retails for about eleven hundred dollars from a bird's eye view when you look at all of these units you could see that they are all built well which helps with performance right out the gate all but the snowmaster do have headlights which makes nighttime performance better and on top of that one thing I noted with the Briggs and the simplicity that they take into consideration that I think Toro could take a note on is the fact that they do include a plastic scraper that is attached to the auger deck which allows you to clean out the augers after every snowstorm as I've talked about in videos past one thing with the auger assembly on dual stage blowers is that they do accumulate quite a little bit of snow in there and if you're not staying on top and cleaning those after every use that can build up quite a little bit and if you have a really cold winter that snow can freeze on there and if you forget about it and you go to engage the augers that can lead to potentially breaking your gearbox which costs a lot of moolah to fix you don't want to do that so you stay on top of that and clean it if you can the fact that snapper and briggs include that little stick is quite helpful toro if you guys could do that with some of your future units that would be great in ensuring that i can make sure my unit stays clean after every use so all in all those are the units we're looking at as you can see they're all great in their own way and already i'm excited about it as i'm sure you guys are too so with that being said let's go ahead and start a review and do some side-by-side -side comparisons out in the field All right, so first up, we're gonna see how these units do in fresh snow. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and play some footage for you guys showing all four of these snow blowers in regular snow. This is a freshly fallen snowstorm that we had at the beginning of February here. We had about a foot plus of snow on the ground. We had some two foot uh, snow drift in some places. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some footage of all these snow blowers and how they did in the regular uh, snowstorm. And we'll come back and check in a few and see which one I thought did best.
So as you'll see, they all did pretty much about the same. Now, considering that we're talking about a fresh snowstorm with little to no foot traffic on the driveway or no compacted snow at all, this is where I would definitely say the bigger units win though, because you're getting that extra power, you're getting that extra quality stance, you're getting that extra stability and stance that you get with the bigger units, like the Simplicity and the Power Max. And you also get the hand warmers, which in my opinion, help you last longer out there in the cold, because let's be honest, it was a brutally cold winter this year. Having those hand warmers, again, awesome and the steering technology on the simplicity made the process a little bit easier a little bit smoother getting around cars trucks all that turning around it was much easier and much more comfortable i would say go with the bigger unit again one of the shortcomings that i think a standard like the briggs has is the fact that you really can't steer smooth with it other than that it did quite well and because it is smaller like the snowmaster those two snowblowers were a little bit easier to oversee and maneuver uh, in tight spaces so other than that i would say all did great here in their own way Next up, we're going to talk about how the snowblowers do in compacted snow. Now, for me, this is where things started to get really, really interesting because typically in a test like this, you would expect, say, a bigger unit to do a little bit better. But I actually found the uh, Snowmaster, I found it much easier to actually muscle it into a layer of snow and ice that is this thick than, say, the big Simplicity or the Toro Power Max. I, find, I found it quite easier, especially with the personal pace, because I can muscle it in in the moment as fast or as gently as I wanted, and I could pull it back push it forward. I found it much easier to break into that layer, especially considering that some of the driveways I had had like a curb that jumps up like this. I found it much easier with the smaller unit to actually jump that curb without going over the ice mound that I had to dive into. Whereas with say the simplicity, as you'll see in a couple of clips here, I did have a little bit of trouble actually diving into the ice. And I had this problem with almost all the dual stages as well, unfortunately. Uh, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just user error, but that's one problem I did run into quite frequently over the last month and if any of you guys would like to comment below on that uh, let me know I'd, I'd appreciate your feedback but uh, what I came to find is with the smaller unit being easier to handle easier to maneuver and having more of that oversight like I keep talking about I found it much easier to actually dive into the driveway in this test I would say the snowmaster and maybe the Briggs definitely take home the gold <music> All right, guys, so for this third test, we are really putting these snowblowers to the ringer. We are going to see how these snowblowers do in snowplow snow, which is basically those ugly mounds at the end of our driveway that are sometimes about two and a half to three feet tall. Let me just go ahead and say I don't advocate the idea that people use their snowblowers for this, but I do find it to be quite practical compared to getting out there and breaking your back with a shovel, because let's be honest, as professionals, we don't have time or the energy to waste for that. So it's much better to take your snowblower and go through it and just be aware of when things seem like they're losing power and pull them back for a second relief. You guys get the idea. Anyway, I found all the snowblowers to do quite well here. Just take a look.
a nice cup of coffee in the morning. So guys, check this out. Look what uh, Toro sent me a couple of months back. So those who've been watching for a while, you guys will know I did a video on their Horizon software a couple of months ago. Really love that stuff. I actually use it in my business. And it actually cuts down on the chaos, which is really nice. And they sent me this as a little nuggy, and I put this at the end of the video, and I love it. If I'm being really honest, I haven't used it very much. It just kind of sat in the cabinet. You know, I'm not really a big user of these. I'm just getting into it. But uh, I finally decided to bite the bullet and use it today since I'm filming outside, and it just happens to be so beautiful. This is like coffee drinking weather. Uh, so I figured I would use this for my excess coffee to keep it warm, and to my surprise, worked pretty well. By the way, real quick, for those of you guys out there who think I am like a coffee nut and I drink like seven cups of coffee a day, no need to worry. I literally drink two cups at most a day. I'm probably throwing a third cup here and there, maybe even a fourth, but that's on a really crazy day. But other than that, I do like to stay hydrated. As a matter of fact, I just bought it one of those like Hydromate things, you know, like they can hold like a gallon worth of water. Not sponsored. I bought it myself and I got to say I'm three days into using it and love it. It's got like motivational times on there and everything telling me how much water I need to drink by what time of the day. It's it's pretty cool. By the way, I shared a little bit more about it on Twitter. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's right here at Jake the Lawn Kid for more live updates as to what's going on behind the scenes, if you will. So yeah, there's a little nuggy for you. Anyway, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into this final test for all the snow blowers here which is going to be this little side street here which the plows never touch i figured this would be perfect get a little dynamic test in there because at this point we've pretty much talked about everything how the snow blowers do in freshly fallen snow how it does in the frozen stuff now we're going to take a look at how it does in some of the snow that has melted a little bit um, especially in this street here which i think might have a little bit of slush so yeah i'm gonna quit talking let's get the snow blowers out Let's get to work. All right, we got all the boys lined up. We've got smallest to biggest out of all four of these, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. All of these snow blowers are pretty much in a league of their own, so we're gonna start with the lowest and work our way to the highest. Gotta set up the main cam here and uh, we can get started, so let's go. Ah, need it. That was the Toro Snowmaster. As you see, I thought it did pretty good. As you see, it did pretty good, at least I thought. Now, when I was going this way, you'll notice I have a little bit of snow that was left on the surface going up this way, and that's probably because I rushed through it, so. User error on my part, right? I'm not a big snowblower guy, but I do what I can. But on the way back, you'll notice we got a little bit of better contact with the driveway, and again, it's the importance of a scraper bar, especially with snow that's fairly soft. As you see, it did pretty well. Now. Maybe it is just me too. I'm not much of a nature expert either. So I was thinking maybe this would be a little more slushy, but because this hasn't really been cleared or anything, it's pretty much just a back road that backs up to a cornfield. Um, maybe that's why it's not as slushy and it was pretty easy to clear because little to no foot traffic actually happens here. So yeah, that was the Toro Snowmaster 724. Pretty good. Did pretty much the same. Have a little bit of tire mark action going on here. It looks like so it was a little bit harder to get down in some areas as it was with the last one as well. So other than that, yeah, pretty good. All right, moving on to the higher end models.
was the 826. I thought it did pretty good for the most part. Now, one of the things I will note is that with a heavier unit like this one, it is very easy for it to trip up, especially if you're doing a driveway that hasn't been salted. With these bigger units that kind of like to drive full force into the snow, it is very easy for them sometimes to get caught up in an ice mound, which does form on compacted driveways with compacted snow. Other than that, all in all, nice work, Toro. Okay, so final verdict. Jake, which snowblower do you think is the best out of all four of these guys? If I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't have a whole lot to say about that because they're all great in their own way and it really depends on what you want to spend your money on personally, right? Maybe if you're doing small driveways and you're not dealing with that much snow and maybe you do have a bunch of tight spaces, the Snowmaster would work perfectly for those of you guys, especially if you're running a little business. It's a great unit to start your business with. Now, for those of my residential friends out there who are looking for something basic to start with in the dual stage department. I highly recommend the Briggs. It is a beast of a unit for how small it seems. It really does power through the snow really, really well. Again, great standard entry level unit and you do get the bonus of a little light on there, which most standard units don't have. So Briggs, great work on that one. The Toro Power Max, I love it. I love the options you get with it. I love how smooth the operation is. You get the hand warmers on there too, which is nice. And on top of that, you get the extra width and the extra power, which is always awesome. Toro, great work on that. And to finish it off with the big dog of the group, the Simplicity, I love that snowblower so much. It is so comfortable. It is a great snowblower to have if you live somewhere where you have a lot of land and a lot of driveway to clear, or if you have a snow business that you've had for a while, you're doing some commercial accounts, maybe you have a lot of driveways you do as well and you need to get them done in a timely manner. The Simplicity is going to save your butt in all of those situations. So all in all, all units are great in their own way. It depends on what you want. Want, I'll let you decide for yourself. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment down below. Spring is almost here, guys. Get hyped. I'll see you in the next video. If I don't see you in the next video, your lawn is going to be dominated. See ya. Whew.